December 7, 1941, a date that will live in infamy. Those words spoken by President Roosevelt while Pearl Harbor was under attack by the Japanese. Many lives were lost that day, but many are still with us. John Tanaka is one such person. His experience with this historical event is something that he will never forget. He was born on Oahu and graduated McKinley High School. Soon after, he enlisted with the Air Force but was rejected. He was accepted in the Army during this time of racial tension. The military was really scared of people with Japanese ancestry. So some of the key guys got shipped out in California. You know, they took them all into concentration uh, camps. John says he was treated fairly. Because of his Japanese ancestry, John was selected to train in a counterintelligence program at Camp Ritchie, Maryland. At that time, it was no longer the Japanese intelligence. Everything was focused on what the communists were doing. So in order to uh, get information from various sources, we had train loads of sugar, candies, Everything, everything that Japanese never saw, we had. The war ended as John finished his training. The battle was over, but not his mission. He was transferred to Shikoku, Japan, to the district of Tokushima, where he was assigned to the War Crimes Division to find a Class A war criminal. Grand Admiral Nagano was the chief of naval operations at the time of Pearl Harbor. And he gave Admiral Yamamoto the go-ahead to attack Pearl Harbor. So he was above. To accomplish this capture, the U.S. asked for help from the British. Japan was divided into various sectors of um, occupation. The Tokyo side was American. Where we were was the British. Admiral Nagano's home was located amidst the rice paddies of Tokushima. After finalizing their plans, John became part of the team that would capture one of the most powerful men in Japan's military. The British got up, they surrounded the home, and we went busting into the front door, and we saw a man and a fairly young lady and a boy and we asked him to identify himself, and he did, Admiral Nagano. The moment Admiral Nagano identified himself, John and the entire team felt compelled to pay their respects. We all went down and we said kakkadono. Kakkadono means almost like your majesty. And we told him we are here to arrest you. And in his perfect Harvard English, he went to Harvard. Um, he says, I have been expecting this. The Admiral was taken by Jeep to prison and John sat next to him. So I was in the back seat with Admiral Nagano. I can't believe it. One of the most interesting thing about Nagano, for me anyway, is that he had no animosity towards America. Zero. He got finally overruled and they decided to uh, attack Pearl Harbor. But he was personally against it. Soon after that, John finished his duties with the Army and was allowed to go home to Honolulu. But first, one more stop. I went back to his home. I saw the lady and I finally found out that she was his wife. I brought with me on my jeep candies, you name it, sugar, beef, chewing gum, anything you can think of I had in my Jeep to give to her. And she looked at everything and like a samurai, she says, thank you, but no thank you. She accepted nothing. She instead gave John this memento, an original military medal given to her husband, Admiral Nagano. Today, John makes his home on the Kohala coast, but Pearl Harbor is not too far away, and neither are his memories of the time he spent with the Admiral of the Japanese Navy.